Are you a CrossFit coach or maybe a box owner looking to learn more about nutrition? You want to help support the athletes that come to your box, maybe you have some one-on-one -on -one clients. And we all know nutrition is the foundation. We all talk about the theoretical hierarchy of the development of an athlete. And nutrition is at the base. It's like building a house. You can't build the attic first. You can't worry about performance and sport without working on the foundation. And that's what nutrition is. So maybe you're a coach, maybe you're a box owner, maybe you're just an athlete looking to potentially earn a little more income, develop a new income stream as a nutrition coach. Well, you could check out the Own Your Eating Certificate course. We review fundamental nutrition principles, as well as teaching you how to implement flexible eating, that's macro counting, and assist others with their tracking of macros. The cool thing about it is you're going to learn so much for yourself. Even if you didn't want to coach anyone else, but you simply wanted to learn more about tracking macros, you will get so much out of this course. It'll be the last thing you ever have to read, study, purchase, because you're going to get so much information. As well as sharing nutrition experience with you, Own Your Eating will also teach you how to coach others so that you can really make a difference with the people in your community and your lives. Maybe you need to finally get your mom to track macros. Maybe it's your best friend. Maybe you, you put on the quarantine 15 and you're looking to just lose a few LBs, a few pounds yourself. This will teach you all of that. And the cool thing about macros, the cool thing about the way in which we at Own Your Eating teach you is it's really sustainable. The business setup and marketing strategies are also included. So if you do really want to make this a side deal or a side hustle, You'll, you'll have all the tools you'll ever need to do. And in addition to that, if you're a level three CrossFit coach, you can earn CEUs to help you revalidate. And we also give CEUs for NASM as well as AFA. So you can check that out. For me, every few years, I need to re-up my L4, you know, no big deal, L4 coach, but this will help you do it. So if you're interested in learning more about the Own Your Eating Certificate course, you can go to courses.ownyoureating.com. Or if you just go to ownyoureating.com, right up in the header there, it says become a coach. You can click on that. And with the code BEST HOUR, that's B E S T H O U R, BEST HOUR, you'll get 15% off. Go check it out now. I was the one, along with Roz, who helped put this all together. So, I really understand that if you have questions for me about it, of course you can reach out, but I really believe in it. I've put hundreds of people through this course. It's the way I learned how to track macros. It's the way I've been tracking macros for over five years, and I think you will absolutely love it. So go check it out again, courses.ownyoureating.com, and use that code BESTHOUR for 15% off. This episode sponsored by O2 Recovery. Oh, is it? If you don't drink O2, you should. The what peach do you like? CBD. The peach CBD is the tits. What do you like so much about it? I actually like carbonation. Like I like carbonated drinks, like fizzy bubbly, if you will. And then um, I just really like the way it tastes. But it's also when I when I talked to Dave and I found out like how they designed it, I was like, oh, that's dope. That's re that's really really cool. And to be perfectly honest with you, I really dig the shit out of how much they do for affiliates. Yeah, they're they're one of the few companies that have kind of caught my notice over the years for actually doing stuff for affiliates and just like sending you know free cases of O2 to boxes and what they did during COVID. So it's pretty cool. I'm happy to support them. I, and I agree with you. For some reason, carbonation, even just like seltzer water, tastes better. But especially when it's flavored and especially when it's got CBD. In Colorado, they it's got fantastic. the THC. They got the THC <laughs> version. I'm on that right now. Yeah. Um, just, no, so now just for the uh, – theirs doesn't really have any carbonation in it, like, which is why I'm shocked that I like it so much. Oh, is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the box – so I've been going to a box here, Ralston Creek CrossFit again, and they, they have O2 and I've, I've had it recently and I, I really enjoy it, especially it's like very refreshing post-workout. And 
And um, they they have some really cool stuff that they do for affiliate. So I, the short and short of it is reach out to O2. They'll send you a case. Uh, if they didn't already send you one during COVID, they can still send you one uh, as an affiliate owner. But they have a bunch of new products that they just launched to you. Um, and you can, if you want to try it without doing that, you can find them in Whole Foods. Yeah. It's always cool when you see companies that started in CrossFit and Whole Foods, like the big one, Steve's Club. I still take pictures almost every time I see it and send it to Steve because I'm like, it's so cool that you started with like Ziplocs of jerky and now you're like a real deal company. Didn't they just rebrand? They did to just Steve's now. That's right. But, um, you know, their old stuff is, is still there probably yeah. you know, until it sells. So it's cool. Spe you know, but speaking of going back to the box, Todd, yesterday I hit, so the workout was five sets of 10 back squats. Every, oh my gosh. Every so other empty minute, barbell for you? Every other minute. So zero, you know, not two minutes rest, but every other minute, right? So zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10, right? Take a stab at what I hit. And mind you, I've not back squatted in probably five or six months off a Smith machine because I've not been in a box. Like but 135? I, come on, take a, take a true step. For, for your heaviest one or for all of them? Did you go across or did you go up? I went across. It was up to you what you wanted to do. I went, I'm I just going to say that I'm just going to say that you used 185. I want to, I haven't seen you. I saw you sitting down. I haven't seen you stand up yet. That's going to dictate what you use. That's my decision on what you use. You kind of crawled to in front of the screen this morning. <laughs> I was so that maybe that was, was a, that was a, no chance. What did you hit? 185? 205. For 10? Five sets of 10, yeah. Five sets of 10? Every, and I was getting maybe a minute and 20 seconds rest because yeah. the sets were taking me forever because of how I squat. You know, I'm just slow and deliberate with my Wait, squats. Wait, how are you getting a minute? How are you getting a minute 20? So you're taking you 40 seconds to do 10 back squats? About 35 to 40 seconds on most. I, would, I was like getting my first five done, taking a deep breath, and then the second five were a little were significantly slower. That's not fast. It's not slow. That's probably about right if, if they're challenging. Yeah, I mean, I have one rep this, every about six seconds, roughly. Yeah, I do this thing where I just rest up top. You guys saw when I hit my fifty reps of one eighty five, which Todd didn't think I could do. But anyway, I'm very sore today. So. I was too busy. I was too busy trying to figure out how the hell we were gonna fix your squat technique. <laughs> so it's been fun getting back to the box. I missed it. It's good to be back. So that is actually a perfect segue, which uh, which is kind of what today's episode about. You think I don't about, know what I'm doing? You think I don't tee that up regularly for you? I actually am 100% <laughs> aware you have no idea what you're doing. You're aware Almost. that I'm unaware? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm aware that you're unaware that you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. Uncle Todd, by the way. Remember, remember, you remember we talked stroller. about the – you remember if we, remember we talked about, you know, unconscious competence? That's not yeah. you. That's not you. <laughs> I'm consciously incompetent. You're, yeah, you're unconsciously incompetent, <laughs> which is the worst. Todd, um, is that stroller on the way you said? You bought a stroller for the baby, Uncle Todd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at the thrift store dropping off some of the stuff, <laughs> and there was one that somebody had thrown in the trash can because they didn't think they could sell it at the thrift store, and so I'm getting that sent out to you. So, Fern said don't buy fancy things for the baby. Oddly That's enough, perfect. oddly enough, you actually cannot sell or buy strollers at most thrift stores. Yeah, that's why I was in the trash can. It's a liability. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah. Todd, give me like Thank the running you. one, like a fancy one, big wheel. I'm not so buying you any of that shit. I'm buying you a, a Tula and you're just going to wear that baby everywhere. I want, is that one of those things you wrap around your body? Yep. Yeah, I want one of those. Yeah. Here's I'm what I'm going to probably, here's what I'll probably do is I'll probably send you a text message about 10 days after you guys have the baby because that's when I'll realize that's the case. Um, and I'll think about getting you a gift and then I just won't get around to pulling the trigger, but I definitely will feel bad that I don't. And I'll send you that text. So just count on that. It'll be worth it. So waiting, you gotta get a text. waiting for a wedding gift from you. I think. Yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we had the discussion well. that the, the Mount Rushmore and you made mention of how, uh, Chuck made his way out to your wedding. And I was like, no way. I don't think I was even working that weekend. I just decided to sit on my couch rather than go to your you, wedding. You, Jenny, a couple other people, no one came. Just Chuck. Just my man Chuck. Hey, That's why he's at Mount Rushmore. If you want to feel better about this, Todd, you got an invite. Yeah. I, we didn't yeah. invite a lot of Ooh. people because it, it doesn't, was, you know, in California. Yeah, Plus, I Ross mean, doesn't really like you, so that was, it was a hard battle. Either, you does, worth either, does, either, either does Jay. Yeah, so... Yeah. 
<laughs> it wasn't worth the fight to get burned on the invite list. I knew he would give me a shitty present anyway. Well, that's why you're <laughs> after, that's why the reception sucked is because I wasn't there. <laughs> All right. How did I tee you up for this topic? Let's hit it. Uh, so you just started going back to the box, right? Yeah, yes. Uh, Friday was my first class. Yesterday was my second. Cool. So then a question, which I actually think I know the. Uh-oh, who's frozen here? Probably Todd. Or me. Where are you guys? It's you. Definitely you. It's you. It's uh, you. We're back. We're back. All right, we're back. I know, we've question. been here. You're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> We, uh, no, what, uh, did, was there anything, anything that the gym did to get you back into the gym? No, I mean, I'm new to this area in Colorado and. Okay. So who did you just, go with? Somebody? Uh, nope. I just showed up. Okay. I, I was right, like, cool. I just Googled it and I was like, you know what? I just want to drop in. I've never been. I don't know what it's like. Checked it out. He, the owner happened to be there at an off time. It was like two in the afternoon. We spoke for quite a while and he was like, yeah, I'd love for you to, you know, train here. And I came in the next day and hit a workout and then I went back. And he was Monday. like, I retract my, I retract my statement. I would, he was I like, would, I thought never, I would love for you to never come better. back at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a question that's a little off topic. Are you still doing your 30 days of um, Chelsea? I finished it. That's why I went back to the box. You did 30 days. That was 30 days already. August Saturday was my 30th day. Wow. And you did all 30? Correct. I'm impressed. It, I don't believe you. I don't either. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was time consuming more than anything, but it course. wasn't even like that time consuming because for nine well, out of the, like nine out of 10 days, that was all I did. Like lucky the only thing for you, do, you the not doing day. anything <laughs> everywhere. So the, the entire day, that's you're not the doing day. anything yeah. ever. One set an hour. And then in between sets, I just chilled at sunbathed. <laughs> uh, no it was it, it was good it, it was it it forced me to to work out on the regular which i would not have done otherwise are we freezing why are we freezing so much today because your internet sucks Ross, your new right. house is not wired is for wi-fi porn yeah. she's watching so. porn on the same line um anyway i'm gonna skip over jay because his shit is busted um but this is on a lot of gyms mind so as they reopen you you've kind of got one or two options to bring people in i can figure out organic ways to bring people in or i can run paid ads uh m for most people paid ads is probably not the way to go at this point because you're probably trying to keep your uh expenditures pretty low at this point have you guys done anything in the past as far as bringing in new clients either one of you like that doesn't and cost you that doesn't uh excuse me that doesn't until you spending any money uh we we've got a referral program at our our gym for current members that can bring somebody in and the the member will get a dirt the the new prospect will get a uh, discount in their first month if they sign up and then if they sign up and stay for their second month the uh the athlete or the member that referred them gets a gets a benefit and a discount as well just for that month um why wouldn't you just give the member the the referral what are you saying? Why do they have to wait for the second month? It's just the way we've worked it out. That's not bad. They're getting it's a like referral for somebody to, 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 sign, to actually sign up, right? Right. You, you no, want to make bad. sure if you buy something, you have to wait the warranty period, say, or the return period if you refer somebody else to the same product. That's not that unusual. You're basically guaranteeing that they stay a member. Yeah. Could somebody leave your gym within 30 days? Could they somebody take, leave my yeah, gym like within I, 30 I days? Like I join and then three weeks later, I'm, I'm out. If they take one of Todd's classes, People, probably. He, probably. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. No, you're so basically your, no, this, uh, this, is, this, is going to, this is going to a different rabbit hole, but like now I have questions about like your cancellation policy and all that stuff because you couldn't even do that at my gym. Like you, yeah, unless, yeah, so unless you join and I'm like, I don't want to do another month. Like you're there for a minimum of two months. Yeah. So we have, we have commitment levels and contracts and whatever you call it. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to be a member of my gym and we're not the right fit, I'm not stealing your, like, I'm not, I'm, we're not going to make you stick around. So you have rules it, that you don't enforce. Yep. Rules that we don't enforce with That's that. Fair. 
Okay. Um, and number two, we've got a uh, rate for a single month that if you want to sign up and try it for one month, um, it's significantly more than our a longer commitment. Um, but Ours you can try too. that as well. Yeah. So yeah. I guess my point is like, I just feel like if, if they bring somebody in, like you should just give it to them, like not give it to them than based on what this other person, because they fulfilled their part of the deal, right? By bringing somebody in the door. So as soon as yeah. somebody walks in your door, they, whether they sign no, no. up or not, you give them something. And what do you uh, get? No, 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 no. When they, when the other person signs up, but I'm not saying like, well, if they sign up for a duration, you do that. Like if they sign up, if they do one month or two months, the referral goes out. It's, so it's the same thing. If somebody no, signs no, up and just, actually says, no, you just said they have to be there for two months. The new member has to start their second month and that's when the, the, the current member gets it. That's what I'm saying. I would, I just, I wouldn't wait for the second month. I would just give it to them because the, the current member did their job already. You see what I'm cool. saying? Um, yeah. all right. So have you, do you guys ever run anything that like bring a friend a week or anything like that day class, anything? We've done it on occasion. It's not that productive in my opinion, at least would it have, have you, been have you analyzed it as to why, to why not? Like what, what could you do to make it better? Well, mostly because we run the other referral program. And so when people have somebody that's interested in coming, they come whenever they find that person rather than waiting for a specific day. Yeah. So then why wouldn't you just tee up a scenario, do spring a friend week and then given a long enough runway up, up into that, then you just keep promoting your referral program and you probably get more people by pairing them together instead of just kind of like, Todd's not into anything. Todd's not into this conversation. No, no, say. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Todd's over it. Because from our, our Todd's just like, nope, I don't do it. We've tried it and it hasn't worked. It's not very good. And if so, so the so same does it thing not work? Like, does it not work, or does it not work because it could be retooled so that it does work? So everything so works, right? Point. Depending on how you do it. All right. So you've got some special plan. Is that what you're getting at? Then tell us how you do it. I'm that not. Works really, I'm not. Really well. so, so we do our, so we had 30 people come in last week. Cool. 30 for new bring people. A friend, is it bring a friend day or week? Week. I don't think you should do bring a friend day. I think bring a friend day is garbage <laughs> because from a consumer standpoint, anybody can fake anything for a day. So I don't think it's fair to the consumer. I would much rather have them come in for a week because it costs me nothing to have them come in for a week so that they can actually get exposure to the full community to multiple coaches to multiple people in the gym to multiple class times to see what the actual offerings are so that the value is a little bit higher on the front end they're like yeah this is super dope and they get exposure to multiple types of workouts so we could have a 25 minute amrap we could have a short burner with some accessory work at the end we could do a heavy day that's partner kind of oriented so everything that we do that week is teed up around making sure that this that the friends have an excellent experience so we had 30 people come in last week which i ought to be honest with you i was kind of shocked given the circumstances um that's probably if not one of our highest ones ever and for that week, we adjusted our referral program and gave it a little extra bump. And we're probably going to get a minimum of 10 of those people. So and how, how, that, how due to that three to four times a week or three to four times a year, that's 30 people that cost you no money to bring them in. And it's more fun that week. So can I ask a few week. questions before Please Todd do. goes? One Please would do. be, how much do you have to alter your programming for that week? Uh, we alter it, but not in the sense of like, we have to do all of this adjustment with like the movements we do. What we do is we kind of put a little bit more thought and effort into the, uh, to the workouts to make them fun, partner workouts, different things like that. We make them shorter. We make some subtle adjustments where the accessory work is mandatory in the last, in the, in the lesson plan that week, because we want as much community interaction in that five days as humanly possible. Now you're just like, Oh, so it's fake. It's like, it's just a slight no, that's fine. Heavier, heavier dose than what we would do normally because we're trying to get the accessory work and do all of those things in every single time anyway. But this week, that's the priority. That's fair. And I think, you know, we've talked about it numerous. Fitness is fitness and shitty CrossFit is still better than no CrossFit. No CrossFit. Yeah, 100%. Right. So, okay. So second question is, if you bring in a friend and they join, what do you, what, what do you get? 
What is so that we give mean? the we give the referral the referral both ways, right? So kind of like Todd does. I don't know what the number is. You can make up whatever. You just like it's all kind of like how you pitch it, right? Hey, it's fifty fifty or seventy seventy or hundred hundred, but you, I'm going to give the same referral to the incoming member. They would get that that discount off of their incoming membership, and then the existing member would either get that or there's some other things we do if they've done paid in full or stuff like that where I can't take a discount off of their membership. I would actually give them something in that scenario. So you just apply it to their membership the next month or their next payment, they get 50 years. What's the so average? They get that, so they get that. They get a handwritten card and a gift card as well What's in addition to the referral. Gift card to what? Uh, usually I'll send them to a uh, gift card from Starbucks. So what – is it the same dollar amount? Like, can you give us an actual number or is it, does it change? Typically we've done, uh, so what's the question again? I think. I'm so if I bring a friend in, what do I get off my membership and what do they get off their first month? 70 and 70. $70? Now, yep. Wow. That's generous. Uh, no, it's not the long, the long tail of that is a way bigger return. Oh, it's, no. it's pennies on the front end. It's pennies on the front end. I completely agree. I mean, yeah. if you take, for $140, if that person stays for a year, you've 10x that. I mean, it's crazy. I get yeah. what you're I get what you're saying, but it's still generous. Some some boxes do $25 only or, you know, $50 only or a shirt. So, I mean, you're I giving think a good it, amount. I think it I think it needs to be like a legitimate thank you. Like I think it needs to be I think there needs to be a lower barrier for somebody who wants to who's like to, mildly unsure. And and we do like a foundations in front of that too, which they pay full price for. So it's still going to be higher. I'm still going to make that overall. I'm still net positive. I'm still net positive, right? Just not as much as I would be if they do that. Yeah. But we and do those in tandem. We do them in tandem for a reason because I'm doing bring a friend week while reminding people that we have a referral program. And then as you do this systematically and periodically, the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just a really easy way to bring in 20 to 30 new people, new clients with almost zero acquisition cost, right? Because so, they're, so, they're paying so, for the discount on, as they come in. So what, ahead, how many sorry. people did you get in the last time you did this? The last week you did? We did it last week and it was 30. Right. And before that, how many people did you have? I have to go back and look. I think it was 26. And how long ago was that? Longer than it should have been because we typically try to do it every quarter. So I, I want to say it was legitimately last year. Yeah. So I like, well, a couple of things. One, I find that you, you talk about doing it consistently, which I think is good, but it's too consistent. People run out of people to bring in. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, so quarterly is as high a frequency as you should go here. And it actually, if you try to hit it quarterly, because if you take out December, January, now I'm only looking at 10 months. So realistically the sweet spot is every is, is like three times a year. Max, right. Max. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then you say there's no, there's no associated cost with it. There's obviously going to be changes in, in the class. There's going to be something taken away from your other members that are in there, depending on how many people are in there. It's fun. It's, it's the most fun week. They're the three most fun weeks of the, of the year, in my personal opinion, as a coach, why, I fucking why, love it. Why wouldn't you make every week fun? Why wouldn't you? Because they're new anyways. people. They're new people. I love my members I, I all the know. time, but it's just like they're new people, and it's and it's a big chunk of new people. So it's just a. It's like what? It's like uh, imagine this, right? So like when we go to, um, so we work seminars every weekend, right? Or we fucking used to, right? In our previous lives, pre-COVID, um, which is cool. All those weekends are amazing. Trainer dinners are awesome. However, the trainer summit is fucking more awesome, is it not? It's just the same thing expanded upon, I guess. I don't what? know that that's Answer a good... Answer the question, I, Todd. It's fucking way more awesome than a Saturday night trainer dinner, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, but you're, that's not comparing the same thing. That's, it's the same environment. Is it, it's, it, it is a volume up, turned up environment, which is, what I'm, which is what you're trying to do in your gym. That is not the same environment. It's a, it's a team you know what, Todd? as opposed to Don't having... do it. I'm trying to help your business out. And you're just oh, like, no, no, that. it doesn't work. I'm like, I'm not saying that. I'm trying to ask questions. You're trying to. <laughs> what I'm saying is. And I'm trying to get the answer. 
it fucking works. I'm just telling I, you, we've never had we've never had less than twenty people come in since we've been doing it, and since we've finally got it dialed in, and, never. And, and, and I'm and gonna pour no less than five person. every single time, no less than five every single time. Well, and so how many like, other referrals do you get every other month? A lot. I get I get probably one or two referrals every single month, because I think you have to train people that we have a referral, and then you have to deliver on it all the time, right? So I give out probably because and I give out that. I'm trying to think of how many I've given out just this year. Uh, I couldn't even, I have to go back and look. I have to go back because I'd have to go back and look at how many damn Starbucks gift cards I bought, but it's probably upwards of 20 so far. Yeah. So I, I understand where Fern's coming from. Basically, you're saying coaching CrossFit is fun. This is just more fun. Like a trainer dinner is Correct. always a blast. We have a good time. We joke. But that summit is unique because it's, you know, at this point, every other year. So it's really fun. Although yeah, and I'm it's, in bed by nine o'clock anyway. Yeah, you're, you, you've actually <laughs> and, never, you've actually never been to a trainer summit party. You're just at the, at the training evolution. I'm, the, the I'm just yeah. there to learn. You guys yeah. are there to party, but let, let's, um, let's follow up on Todd's kind of statement. Cause that was where I was going is, so you get 30 people. Why are you only getting five to 10 to join? Some of them are never going to join, right? So some of this is a numbers game. Right. And some of them will do it twice and I'll get them the second time. Right. So you allow so people it's, to it's like to any do sale. It's like any sales proposition. hundred percent is not real. That's not real life. No, I don't expect you to, but I mean, these aren't cold calls. So they're no. coming in, they're with a friend, their friend probably had their life changed because of CrossFit Rife. So they're already coming in warmed up. Yeah. But, there's definitely social proof involved already here. Yeah. What, so how, how many times will you let somebody do this? If they, uh, I didn't want to join this time, can I do it again next quarter? Every fucking time. Every time. Yep. Do you do you quickly kind of assess people like who's going to join and who's not, and does that dictate the way you engage with them? No, that would be real shitty service. Yeah, but I mean, you're yeah, you're if you look at somebody and assume whether they will join or can join, you are. I don't. I'm not that saying is you're the worst. <laughs> worst possible approach to being a I'm not business saying owner and selling a product judging or a, book a service by its cover but i'm sure you have some people that come in and they're just like no I'm we not just joining. we give just we just get, we take them through the whole process and when when we do we bring them in we introduce them we get information we introduce them to the class you know we give them a shout out at the end of the class we follow up with them with the next week um and then what will happen on some of these or some of these and actually a decent portion, probably somewhere into the tune of 30% after they've done it, will immediately bring in another person or a spouse. Yeah. So that 30 is actually a larger portion of people. And my whole, the whole reason I'm bringing this up is because just to try to arm people, because I know people are struggling to being, to bring people in the gym. And I don't think one day is adequate because you, that's not your real service. That's a, that's a fake thing, right? Like, bring a friend week is hard to because they're going to get exposure to all your coaches if you suck like they're going to find out in one week but if you're amazing they're going to get multiple doses of amazing throughout that week with the volume turned up just a little bit not a lot you're not being fake right i'm just really highlighting what it is that we do well in that week and making it fun when i do it is it a monday through saturday when you say week Co correct yeah and no i I like it. I think, I think it's a good idea. I think if a box is listening, you really lose nothing by trying it. First of all, it's $0 realistically upfront. And, like, and if, and if you like pocket money out of your pocket, I agree with, but there is, there is things that go into that. Like depending on how many people show up to your class, especially in this day and age, most gyms out there have a limited class size. You guys probably don't, right? You guys nope. don't at all. So they lick each other's I would faces say, at, at Rife. They just lick yeah. one another. Everybody, we've actually, we've actually changed the standard for handshake. It's, so it's not just a handshake. You have to spit and in your hand <laughs> and then do a handshake. Coffee and then wipe it on face. somebody's mouth. Yep. Wipe it on exactly. somebody's mouth. Exactly. Like I, 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 I completely agree that I think doing something like this to bring people in and, and give them exposure to your experience is great. Um, I think – you know, from my experience, there is cost associated with it, not cost me, you know, spending my actual dollars, but to 
um, take class spaces away from my current my my current members um, to we haven't, we haven't had to do anything. Areas. We haven't had right. to do and anything. Like, and I would say you're an anomaly because I would I would argue to to guess that ninety percent of the people listening to this have limited class sizes in the current environment, right? Which which is fine. However, if you need business, then you should just add fucking more classes, right? Like if you're in a tight spot, then figure it out, right? Oh, so absolutely. It's just like, I'm not saying it's not going to cost you more money, but as you get it dialed in, if you can get this to work now during COVID, when it's restricted for most people, when the handcuffs come off, then you've ironed this thing out. You've really started dialing like, okay, what is a good experience? How should we introduce people to a class during bring a friend week? What are we going to do as a shout out? How are we going to follow up? What is the thank you going to be? So for me, I don't, I look at it as like, it is a, it is an opportunity for me to give somebody a good experience with zero expectation, whether they are going to join. And I find that that mindset leads to sales far more often than not. I, I, just, I mean, I, I agree with what Todd, I mean, I was saying financial costs, like marketing, et cetera, but yeah, there's always a cost when you change things. It's well, there's always a cost, but that cost, coaches. but that cost is there regardless. It's not like you're not spending energy on the floor. No. And actually I, I, I don't find it to be more cost. I find it to be way more fun. Like I get stoked to go on the gym and bring a friend a week. Like I'm, I'm like there bells on, like it's amazing. I think that's a bigger indication of you're just crappy the other 50 weeks a year. Do you agree with yeah, that, Tom? <laughs> probably. I don't know. I'm just, I'm curious about that. Um, so, but I so, like, so, go ahead, so one of the things, yeah, one of the things for me is like, obviously, and I'm sure you do the same thing, Fern, is like every time somebody walks in my door, I want to give them that same amazing experience. 100%. And so that's the point, right? And so the goal is to get people in the door. And I think, I think the value of the bring a friend scenario in general, whether it's a day, whether it's a week, whether it's anything, isn't necessarily to expose them to all the different facets of our program. It's to get the people that are nervous to walk through the door, to walk through the door. I don't is, care what we're doing. That if, is, if, if that is somebody, absolutely what it's for. Right, exactly. So my biggest thing is like, hey, I'm just trying to figure out ways to get people to walk through the door. And I don't think somebody needs a week. I think somebody needs a day. And so we try to facilitate that as often as possible. And we don't try to do just, we've no, done the week not, thing, we've done the day. I am not saying, so here's what I'm, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying we don't take referrals throughout the rest of the year. We absolutely do. I'm never going to turn it and be like, Hey, can I bring a right. friend in? My only stipulation on that is I need to know what day. Cause if it's Amanda, no, they're not coming in on that day. Sorry. It's not happening. What? Like, I, I see the challenge with that, but why not show them what, what you can do on that day? Because what if they sign up not, and then their first it's not regular a, class is now Amanda? Because it's not, not about me. So that's where I think that has to be flipped. Yes, I could manage that. I, however, don't think that anybody showing up to CrossFit on their first day is going to have a fantastic experience if Amanda is the workout and they can't snatch and they can't muscle up. So it's not about me. It's about like, how can I make their experience awesome where they can do the thing just like everybody else and there's no friction point and they don't have to scale and they can have a partner or something like that. I'm not trying to introduce that. We'll get to that later, but that shouldn't be day one, right? Like it's like, you know, it's like going on a date and the first time you meet them is just like when they wake up in the morning. It's like, no, no, the first time I meet you guys, I want you, I want you to look good, you know, not like Jay looks right now. You know, I want you to look like you've gotten nice. out of bed more than once in the past four months. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I do this show from my bed, but so my question would be, so going Todd, back to like, so, so your statements were just like, well, this should be like that all the time. Like, yes, but you guys have already multiple times in the show acknowledged that like you guys think there is a number where their energy is high in a class and you've said anywhere between eight to 12, right? So this is the same principle, except like if I go from 12 to 18, I think the energy is better in those scenarios. Yeah, I, so that's I'm not, the point is when you, is when you do that. I'm not arguing about the energy thing. I, I get what you're saying. We all have different reasons that our energy skyrockets in a class. It could be a specific member. It could be a, uh, a, a group of people that you, you really enjoy, or it could be new faces. That's Fern that's frozen this time, right, Todd? I think so. I see you. Yeah, he's frozen. He's so hostile today, isn't he? Mm, fired up. He's waving a knife around too, which I'm a little concerned. <laughs> <about>. <laughs> I don't know where he is. I guess, but I was going to ask you anyway, so we can continue. Is you for you at your box? Someone can bring a friend just any day, any time. 
they usually give us a heads up, but most of the time, if somebody asks, then we'll green light it. So, which I think is a friend got dropped, probably better off. But um, I, I think that's a good practice. I think you can have both. I don't think they have to be exactly, and I don't, and I don't think it is like that at right to be fair to Fern. But no, I don't think so either. I, I've learned over the years. So tell me your opinion on this. When I would do that at my boxes, like we were talking about, your friend could be like, hey, I got somebody that really wants to check out CrossFit tonight. They come in and it's Amanda or it's a muscle up workout or it's a 5K. And they're like, this is stupid. I either can't do this or I can do it at home or I'm going to get hurt. So there is benefit to saying this is specifically the week we want you to bring people. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think there's certain workouts that'll make it more challenging um, for somebody new to be in here. But I, like in this day and age, now nowadays, I think by the time somebody's willing to come in, and whether that's with a friend, whether that's an inquiry on their own or not, they have an idea of what CrossFit is. I'll give and you so that. There's there's less of what it was ten years ago, where it was like me begging this person hey, you got to come to this class with me. It's a workout. And they're like, well, what is it? And you're like, well, I don't even know how to tell, tell you about it. You just got to come do it. And you walk in and you're doing Amanda and the coach is like, hey, see those weird ring things? Let's see what happens. Like, that's not a thing. But nowadays it's like people have an idea. There's, you know, they're still just nervous about walking in the door. And so facilitating that, whether it's a week long way to facilitate that, whether it's, any day of the week, whatever it is. So I think, I think for spot on that the referral plan program showing to your members that that's an option. So they remember and keep it top of mind and making sure that you're open to allow people to come in and, and um, get that good experience. And the, the experience is consistent day in and day out is critical. Well, and not to mention everything you said is true. Plus the coaching has evolved. So if the workout in 2010 was Amanda, you know, Amanda was, I think first at the games in 2010, if we plugged it in and somebody brought in a friend, I'd be like, well, you're going to snatch a light barbell and you're going to do pull-ups. We're now as, as better coaches, we know we can change this in a way that it is more fun for that person or let them know, Hey, we're not even going to do Amanda today. We're going to do a different workout. Fern, you, you got dropped, but we're just discussing basically the benefit yeah, one of, of my the coaches week. unplugged the Wi-Fi. Well, uh, but anyway, go ahead. Fire Cassidy. But yeah. The, you know, we we're saying like the, the benefit of that week is you're planning the workouts versus a box that just says bring a friend anytime, which I still think we should do. But then you could bring someone in and they don't get a true experience of what CrossFit could be like. Yeah. So I, how, what, whether it's a, kind of what, and I didn't really catch most of what Todd was saying, just the back end, which I, I might was, be repeating. This. It was, it was probably anyway. very profound. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah, profound. yeah. Um, but the point is not whether it's a week or a day or three days. The point is that I put some thought behind it and it's not just like, Oh, just bring somebody in. That's just not a good sales experience. Right? So Can if I'm doing, us- I'm, I'm, I'm making it an ordeal that my members look forward to. Yeah. yeah that's cool. It, it's like color war I, back in summer camp. You guys ever do that back in the day or like team wars? You didn't go to summer camp, Todd? Oh, you were a band camp. <laughs> I don't even yeah. want to go to where and now I'm thinking about that. Yeah. Anyways, here's, here's the thing to watch out for though. It to, potentially is that you're exactly right. You want to create an experience. You want to make sure you have a process in place to create that experience and to keep up with each of the people, people that walk through your door. I have seen it go down at different places to where they, they have this great idea They push this bring a friend day really, really hard with all their members and they get 30 people or they get 50 people and they don't have the capacity, one, to even talk to everybody during the day or during the week. And then number two, the people come in and they leave and there's no follow up. There's no forethought. There's nothing to actually make it a good experience to actually try to convert that person into a member to actually make the sale. So it's like you've got to, I think there's got to be balance there. Whatever you're going to do, make sure that you can actually facilitate it and complete your goal of this thing. If it's just to get a bunch of people in the door, shoot, you could do something to get a bunch of people in. But if you're not even going to talk to them or have their contact info or to bother to follow up with them, it's irrelevant. So keep that stuff top of mind. It's like whatever That's, you do, yeah. 
every single person needs to be connected with and you need to you need to like you said have a process make sure they see the experience and that they will have a chance to be co converted based on that experience not just hey i've got a gym you did a workout let me know if you like it we'll be here tomorrow too super low hanging fruit right give yourself a long enough runway to promote it create a google form send it out to your members Hey, this is how you create a referral. So you can get half these people to sign up their friends prior to. You could even reach out to them beforehand and give them a little insight on the week if you wanted to. When they come in, uh, try to get them to send them the waiver beforehand so you don't run into that goat rope of, of yep. like trying to get five people to sign waivers at one time for your 4 p.m. class, which is your packed class. So you have to think about all these things ahead of time. If you can, you should always have an extra coach floating around. Just like you're just here for whatever anybody needs. And that way I can actually start the class on time. If we do happen to be running late, this person can get them in the waiver. They can shuttle them into the class and they can do that. You should introduce everybody before you even start the whiteboard. Hey guys, bring a friend week. You guys already know that Todd, Jason, they're friends with Fern. Welcome guys. You guys are having a great experience. Everybody. If you don't know anybody, please make sure that you introduce yourself to them during the warm up, like all that stuff. Then you should follow up. Like we give everybody a shout up. Hey, everybody, guys, Todd, that's Todd's first CrossFit here or CrossFit workout here at CrossFit Rife. Let's give them, you know, we do like two claps and a Ric Flair or something like that. But like you should call them out by name afterwards and then follow up. And we have the Google Doc that we'll send the members. It's a referral sheet. And we have a sign up sheet as well. So we went Monday through actually Sunday because we were closed on Saturday for a weightlifting meet. And then we did like a brunch wad on Sunday. And then every single person on that list got an email email from me on a Monday morning, 30 emails immediately. When you make your sheet in order to not make this like a, a fucking, um, like just a copy paste, make sure you know who the member who brought them in, their name is on there as well, because now I can make each one of those emails tailored to the person when I send it out. So they're just not like, Oh, this is just a canned email that went out. And then from there you can start booking appointments and in the email, remind them of the referral offer that they can take advantage of. Um, yeah. If you have a spouse, you can get blah, 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 blah. So all that stuff and I'll follow up with them. And if they don't do it, Hey, I'm just glad you had a good experience. Cause already she's like, ah, I just don't want to do it right now. Hey, cool. I'm just glad you had fun. You know where to find us when you're ready and Absolutely. she'll come back in next time, you know? So, yeah. So I think that's the stuff that's important. That's what makes it valuable. But those, that's also the stuff that I, that in my opinion makes it cost not only a little bit, but that's, that's a pretty significant cost. The amount of time and effort you just said right there, like put an extra coach on the floor, doing the things beforehand, doing the things afterhand. Yes, they have to be done anytime that there's a, there's a potential client, but I mean, that's somebody needs to be paid to be doing that stuff. So just don't be, um, well, if you systemize it, it's all super fast, right? Like most of it, the only thing that take, takes any time at all is, maybe having an extra coach on the floor and I've got two people floating around anyway. So they're there getting paid to do either admin work. So it does, it does not cost me any more money. Um, and once you plan it out, like we've done it so many times at this point, like everybody just knows, like bring a friend week, everybody knows what all the standard kind of like additional operating procedures are for the classes, how we do it when we follow up. Um, and I'm going to add one more thing into it this, um, this time, which is just, again, uh, from an, from an experiential standpoint, Everybody, whether they join or not, just gets a thank you card for showing up. Just going to write it, drop it in the mail and be like, hey, thanks for showing. I really appreciate it. We're here if you need us for anything, blah, 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 blah. Find out something about them. Maybe they don't do that. Maybe they buy personal training, at which point your return is exponentially higher than the um, minimal amount of time that you would have spent doing that. Yep. Uh, and this is for people that are just are spinning their wheels and they don't know what to do. And they think that running Facebook ads is the only way to do that, right? Like start with your members who you love, get them to bring people in. Uh, you know, you can sprinkle in if you have like an ambassador program or something like, or something in that looks like that in your gym, you can now arm those people with like, they also have a job that week too. So it doesn't have to just be the coaching staff. And, I mean, word of mouth is 100% always the best way to get new members. So yeah, but word of mouth with no systems in place and word of mouth without intention is useless. It's just like, hey, yeah. you have a referral program. I'm like, what is it? And they're just like, well, somebody brings in somebody and they get some money back. I'm like, how are you pushing that? How are you intentionally teeing that up so that it actually fucking happens? And the answer is almost always, I'm not doing shit. No, I think, I think you brought something valuable to the show. I mean, it took almost two years, but thank you. This you is mean great. Todd, since you've been here just <laughs> sucking the life out of the show for 286 episodes? Yeah. Fern, put your knife down 
and relax. I want to <laughs> stab you. I want to stab you. That's why I have this knife. Just the sight of you makes me want to stab you. Let, let's let's. I think we we we're, we're all pretty settled on this. You gave out some great advice. People listening, if they want to reach out, of course, we'll always help them if it's their first time. But you guys poo pooed my Spirit Week, and I think that's something that should be addressed. Spirit when did you, Week. What Spirit? What Spirit Week? What are you talking about? So when Spirit did you say week, that? Well, that was when I we, talked about Color Wars. I'm calling it Spirit Week now. So in summer, you can't just change like, the name of it and say we poo pooed it. Well, hey, we did. We okay. Well, you're poo pooing it now. So yeah, poo-poo. and now I'm definitely whether I like it or not, I'm going to poo poo it now. But before you say anything, it was like part of summer camp. So anyone that went to camp back in the day knows there was like crazy sock day, inside out day, you know, color day. I'm telling you, members love that shit. That stuff's fun. We do that during the open. Okay, what gym so was do- it? What gym was it that we did? Was it 12th state? They, they, had, had, maroon, they, maroon they had Maroon Monday. It was like, yeah. but it was just one class. I think it was like the 3 p.m. class. They're like, no, no, this is just a 3 p.m. class thing. It has Maroon Monday. Like nobody else plays. <laughs> no, that, and any way you spin it is cool. I would say if I owned a box right now, what I would consider would be a spirit week and really well thought out, culminating with maybe a Saturday workout that was class you know, a, a team workout based on class. So all week you're kind of building up points for your class time. And then on Saturday, it's like the 5 a.m. And you can combine classes if some are less, you know, busy than others. But you got the morning people, the noon people, the evening people. And it, it, it's just a fun week. I mean, it's very different than what Fern is talking about. I'm not suggesting both or one or the other. It's just a different idea you can run out there. Well, so – we actually did both this time. So normally we just do bring it for a week, but we started this year, we started like our first dry run at uh, like a member appreciation week. But so we're going to do the bring a friend week three, maybe four times a year, but only once a year will we do the member appreciation week. And we will pair that with one of the bring a friend weeks because that that's week when that is going to cost you a little bit of money, not a ton, but you're going to be giving away a lot of stuff like partner with a local coffee house and have them come in and cater and just give away free coffee That's for cool. the full day well, like, and, then, and then do all that together for the week and make it really 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 fun and then people like are just stoked to look forward to that every year well then your new people i mean think about i mean we're very biased as well as the listeners so it's like we're so used to having a community but what most people they finish college and they're like they don't have a tribe or a community or a family outside of you know their own so it's like they, they might walk in and be like, this is awesome for the first time in decades. So that's the point, right? That's the point of, of like turning the volume up so that when they walk in, they almost feel like they have to be a part of it. You're like, no, no, this, this is awesome people here that you are definitely going to want to know and have part of your life. We're just going to tee it up intentionally so that we can check all the boxes of as far as like social integration and all those things. Like it's not, you can't, you, at some point you can't do it by accident anymore. Like it needs to be very intentional and dialed up in a very specific way to get maximum return on it so that you can deliver an awesome service to those people. Yeah. And you could do things like you said, reach out to a coffee shop. You can reach out to O2, like we talked about earlier. I'm sure they would send you a couple of cases, uh, you know, of water or uh, whatever your local Whoever, whatever companies are. that you do work with that are supplements, just be like, hey, we're doing a promotion this week. Is there any swag you want to send us that we could give away? I yeah. guarantee they will send you some shit. Because people will support that company going forward. Cool. All right. So we've got Bring a Friend Week, Spirit Week. Fern's angry today. Anything else? I'm fired up. I'm not angry. We're, we're closing in on the haircut, aren't we, Fern? Uh, I mean, not really. November. All right. Well, we're August, September, October. What about you, Jay? When are you closing in on a haircut? Are you going to wait until Fern's 42? Are you going to go until you're 50? I'm thinking... I came, I came across a, a picture of you with the long hair again. You bro, mean your screensaver really, on your phone? You just took your phone? <laughs> yeah. You need to go That's back it. to the short hair, bro. You need to go back to the yeah, short hair. You I'm need not, to go get a cut. It's I'm not bad purposely right now. growing it out. I'm just not getting my... I'm not going to get my haircut during quarantine. That so. don't... It, mm. Never mind. I'm not going to take us to it's that. It's August, wanna, bro. It's August. Go get a fucking haircut. I don't no. want to sit there with a mask on and have to get No a action is an action there, right? <laughs> Misplaced action? Is that what you were saying? No. Boss quote? No. You guys think the games are going to happen? Fingers I crossed they do. 
I thought they were like had a pretty hard date in September, or has that changed? I haven't looked honestly. I no, they looked. do, but they do have a pretty hard date, from my understanding. But it, you s- still have to get there, and the, the state still has to green light it, or the county, or the city, or whatever it is that has to green light it. So, I'm in Virginia hey. Beach. We're fucking yeah, open. just run it, run it, it first. Run it yeah. at CrossFit Rife. You know what, Dave? It doesn't matter what any of the rules are. Run it at CrossFit Rife. We can have as many people in here as you'd like. We we'll bring and we'll do a bring a friend day. Everybody, bring a friend day. We can all do. Yep. We can all do absolutely workouts. It'll be mandatory. Wait, mandatory no masks. Mandatory no masks. <laughs> yep. Wait. So, assuming the games happen, who would you guys pick right now as the as the front runners? Uh, hmm. Tia, I'm a, I, mm, Matt, Matt Fraser. <laughs> I mean, is that I, who you guys the, think? I'm not. Well, it's weird. It's weird because nobody has any information from this year. It's just like you're basing everything solely based on the previous year's winners, which is kind well, of I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Step one: we got to know who's going to be there. I can't yeah. really have you can't have an educated discussion until you know who's actually going to be there. True. So. But yeah, yeah there, there's a, there's a decent chance that a lot of these uh, like from outside the U.S. like physically won't be able to get here, right? Yeah, and and like you said, without seeing all the sanctionals leading up to it, we don't see how people are performing. And then Frazier not showing up to the Rogue based on injury, you know, we don't know. How, I just know I saw that comment of Castro supposedly saying Frazier could be beat, but I also know he was just trying to stir it up. Yeah, well, he posted something the other day about like Patrick Vellner's like highest placing. He was like, which coincident, which coincidentally was his highest placing that weekend before he got caught. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> I hope it happens. I hope we get out there. I hope we judge. So, anyway, I think that was a really great episode. Hopefully, the listeners enjoyed. And if you have questions on Bring a Friend Week, if you have questions on Spirit Week, or you have questions on why Fern is so angry. Direct him to us. <laughs> He's got the knife back, Todd. Let's everybody, uh, everybody who listens to the show knows why I'm angry. You're my <laughs> counterpart. <laughs> All right, guys. Great episode. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right, on Spotify you can listen to all your favorite artists but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of best hour of their day. Thanks again for listening to best hour of their day. If you haven't already, do us a favor head over to the Apple Podcast app and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback for either Fern or myself. Hit us up, day at gmail.com or send us a DM over on Instagram at day. Once again, we couldn't do this without the amazing community and you are a part of it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting. 
best hour of their day.